I think my friend is having an affair with my boyfriend. On vacation, my friend and I met a handsome guy. At first he paid attention to my friend, but she categorically rejected all the signs of attention. A few days later, he started flirting with me, after we had spent a whole day together on an excursion. My friend and I are from one city, and he is from another. Sometimes he comes to our city. He arranged to communicate with me, and definitely meet me when he was in our area. Before he left, he gave his card to my friend for some reason, which I didn't like very much. Our long-distance communication with him did not stick. We communicated very rarely. I saw my friend almost every day. Our life went on. We never discussed this guy. We talked about something else. And then he called me and told me that he was coming to my city for a few weeks. We make an appointment to meet. But at the last minute, it gets disrupted several times through his fault. Allegedly, he has last-minute urgent matters that need to be resolved. And at the same time, my friend suddenly starts asking me how things are with this guy, if we are not communicating, if he has not called me. When I tell him that yes, he has, that we want to meet, that he's going to be here for a few more weeks, my friend exhales with some strange disappointment, a few more weeks. And this is where I start to suspect something is wrong. I compare the facts, it turns out that the very days when we had a meeting with my boyfriend, my friend was also busy with something. Also in her vocabulary, there is a certain specific expression that this guy often uses in conversation. I'm beginning to fear that the girlfriend may have dialed his number on his business card. They may have been chatting, and he may not have come to see me alone, let's just say. The cherry on the cake. I know from some reliable sources that he had already been in my city for a week before he called me. And he told me he called me right on the first day after he arrived. I suspect that he could have spent that week with his girlfriend, lied to her that he was leaving, and called me to keep talking to me. My friend foresaw the possibility of this happening, so she took a keen interest in his contact with me. And that is why she reacted so strangely to my message that he was planning to spend a few more weeks in our city. It seems that I have reasons to be suspicious, but it could all be a coincidence. A friend could just for some reason remember about the vacation and wondered how the hero of my novel. Since she didn't particularly approve of him and my interest in him, she could have been disappointed that he was here for a whole few weeks and I was going to hang out with him. She could have really been on to something of her own on those nights when our meetings with him were disrupted. Even if he's playing a foul game and was seeing someone else on those nights, it's not a fact that it was my friend. And the business card he gave to his friend to say goodbye. It was suspicious of him, but not the fact that the friend called him. I asked the girlfriend and him directly if there was anything between them. Both deny and swear that they have no memory of each other. I'm wondering if that's true. I really like the guy, but he's still a new person in my life that I don't know. It doesn't hurt me as much if it's all true, because of him as a friend. We've been friends for years. If it's true, I'm scared to have a friend like that around. I sleep with everyone in a row. All my life I've been pretty thin, pretty, but with low self-esteem. Difficult relationships in the family, bullying at school were taking their toll. I had almost no admirers. In all my school years, only two guys paid attention to me, and not for long. Then I was put on hormones for health reasons, and I got fat. I stopped taking them with the doctor's consent, and hoped that I would easily regain my former weight. I had never been on a diet, there was no need, and here I thought that I should just get off the pills and the weight would go away, but unfortunately, it was not that simple. In just one year, all my clothes, both winter and summer, became so small that I could not button the buttons on my favorite dress, could not fit into expensive new pants that I wore just once. I was insanely frustrated. I gave everything away. I couldn't even sell it for a penny. 
and bought myself some new clothes. For a few years, I lived in a completely new body, a new and disgusting body. Creases on the abdomen, double chin, full arms, shorts, short skirts, and mini dresses disappeared from my closet. Diets didn't work either. I just freaked out and I couldn't love myself anymore. Then I got married and gained more. My husband and I became like two huge hogs. It was horrible. Then a few more years later, we got divorced. That's when I started taking care of myself, especially when the pancreatic problems started. Doctors diagnosed gastritis, pancreatitis, biliary problems. Anyway, I had to work very hard not to die of pain. I started reducing calories, kept a diary, bought a smart scale, and started cooking only healthy foods. I also completely gave up sugar, butter, fried, spicy foods, and drank more water. The only thing I could not make myself to do was exercise. I just walked a lot. I was thinking, pondering. I lost a lot of weight, began to like myself, became more confident. And I met a man. We moved in together, and everything seemed fine, but I couldn't stop. People start paying attention to me, flirting with me, and I'm not used to that. I'm not used to anyone being interested in me at all. Before I knew it, the flirting started to cross the line, and now I'm already cheating on my man in our bed. I thought it was just one time, that it was just a mistake. But it happened again. For the first time, I began to feel pleasure from sex, from myself. It's like I'm looking at myself through men's eyes. I don't really want to. Sex is enough. But when they come on to me and start saying something dirty and slutty, I don't notice how it carries me away. And I have never cheated before. I have never even thought about it. Not before or after my marriage. But here I just can't say no. I can't say no. I feel like I'm being taken advantage of, although I am. My relationship with the man was not very good from the beginning. I feel that the man is not mine. Let's split up. Initially quarrels on any occasion. Everyday life, views on life. He himself says that it is necessary to separate, so my conscience does not particularly torment me. Rather, tortured by the feeling that I will not stop being used for one purpose only, and I will never be able to refuse. For the first time, I am wanted. My body is considered desirable, beautiful. Yes, they hardly ever talk to me. They leave right after sex. They don't want anything more. I realize how disgusting this is, and I am disgusted with myself. I can't wash myself in the shower after these encounters. I hate myself, but I can't stop. I feel like a cheap girl. And not just cheap, but free. Recently, an old acquaintance, with whom I had a good relationship in high school, dropped by for a visit. One thing led to another. Anyway, we slept together without protection. I'm going to get tested. Paranoia is killing me. I think I need to get my head checked, too. I don't know what's going on with me. I've always had principles, standards of morality, behavior. Now it's turned into some kind of nightmare. I seem to have lost myself completely. How do I forget someone who never loved me? For 12 years, I can't forget a man. Tried all methods except magical reversal. Been to a psychologist, asked for peace of mind in church, tried to distract myself with an affair with another, started my own family with another man. The trouble is, I don't really want to forget him. I have a feeling that if I agree to forget, I will forever cut the last thread between us. And as long as I remember and love, that thread exists. Without the string, I would lose him for good. It was love at first sight the son of acquaintances from a family richer than mine. My family had borrowed money for my schooling from his family. They couldn't pay it back for a long time. He probably didn't know about it. 
But to him, money is the most important thing in life. How could I expect anything with a guy like that? I'm a pauper. I saw him for the first time, and I thought it was a shame that such a handsome man would never pay attention to me. He treated me in a friendly way, and I was lost. I told myself that the man lived other values, that he had too different a lifestyle, that he had many girls, that he was frivolous windy. I was afraid that nothing would come of it. I did not show my best feminine qualities, caring, kindness, gentleness, softness, although in fact I am. I wanted to prove to the unknown that I am not worse than him, that I am something special, that I do not care, and I played the role of a cold, ruthless bitch. If there was any interest on his part at first, I repelled it myself, and there were plenty of gentle, soft and caring women around. That's what he ended up marrying, someone who was a good cook who bore him three children and embroidered shirts and knitted socks. A craftswoman and a needlewoman. Simple, not particularly pretty, but apparently warm and cozy. And I could be in her shoes. Yes, I don't like embroidery or knitting. I never dreamed of confining my world to the kitchen and children. But, damn it, I'd do anything for him. I'd do anything she does if that's what he needs. But you can't turn back the clock. I told him I loved him when I found out he was getting married soon. I thought maybe he loved me deep down after all. Maybe, like in a movie, like in a fairy tale, he would hide his feelings and be happy. After all, his actions were often strange. I'm still willing to swear that he was interested in me. But he answered me so harshly, he told me that nothing had ever happened between us and could never be. That he could never hurt me. What those words meant, I still don't understand. That he couldn't use me for fun and leave me. That he wanted a rich bride and not me. After all, there was a rumor that he was marrying on terms. And for a long time, I comforted myself with the thought that in fact, he did not love his wife. But it's been years. Yes, they live well, but he loves her. Why else would they have three children? Why is he married to her for 10 years? I'm married with a child, unhappy in my marriage. Maybe if my husband had been kind and caring, I could have bonded with him, thawed out. But I literally jumped out with the first man I met, got married, had a quick baby. I thought that he loved me, that fate was sending me a reliable man to replace the one who didn't love me. I was sorely mistaken. My husband turned out to be a domestic tyrant. I cannot get out of this marriage because I have health problems. I could not raise a child alone. Sometimes I hate my husband. Sometimes I tolerate him. He is a stranger to me. And I do not respect myself for a long time. I live like a prostitute with no one for food, money, and comfort. And in fact, we live poorly. If it were a marriage with the one I love, I would be happy anyway. But with an unloved one, everything seems harder than it is. And my husband does not love me. Why he married me, I do not know. I think of that man every free minute. And he's happy without me, he doesn't even remember me. He's had so many fools like me in his life. I raised his self-esteem with my declaration of love, and that's it. And he goes on living his life, not caring that he tamed someone, attracted attention to himself, gave hope by his careless actions.